Hi everyone, it's Ren here. I hope you're doing well. And today, uh, as the uh, sunset is getting near, I would like to take just a little bit of time, not a long time, to discuss the topic of uh, science versus art. Uh, you hear a lot of the time in the, in the collective unconscious that uh, science and art are <coughs> kind of opposites topics, disciplines, areas, you know, of research or creativity. Oftentimes you conceive, or I think, I believe that people tend to conceive of the science and art as being very uh, <clears throat> partitioned worlds, opposed worlds, and which are mutually very often uh, critical of each other. Uh, <clears throat> you will of course hear scientists say oftentimes, well, what does this piece of art say? Like, what is it contributing? Uh, what's the point? Okay, like this is beautiful, I can accept that, but like, because it's technical, what's, what, what else is there? Obviously, obviously I'm, I'm like exaggerating a little bit, but it's just for, you know, to make my point. On the other, si on the other side, you have like um, sort of a segment of the artistic sort of mind or community that would, <sighs> often throughout history, maybe more recently so, question the fundamental, what it perceives as a fundamental scientific belief in progress and in the possibility of getting closer to truth. Um, now, I will not go into the detail of like the difference between science and technology and what progress is versus optimism versus all these things, because for each of these words, there could be a philosophical discussion. But what I would like to tackle briefly is the idea that is fundamentally my idea um, and that I, will, I would like to hopefully develop um, in some future work or maybe a chapter of my current work, we'll see if that's possible, is the idea that like science and art are actually very, very complementary and that both of them are fundamentally about approaches corresponding to a fundamental human yearning for getting to know being and the world better. A fundamental quest by human being, which is so far as we know the only being that engages in the practice of science and also in the practice of art. Um, and the fact that like human being is concerned with uncovering as it, you know, uh, progresses towards history has this ambition to get to know more about the extent of its life, the nuance of its life and of its belonging in the world, of being in the world. On the one hand you have science which has as its purpose, you could argue, the discovery of the certain laws that explain how the world functions in terms of uh, physical phenomena. And it's incredibly complex, has a way of leading investigations that is fundamentally different to art, but ultimately when a scientific discovery is realized, it, first of all, it implies like, a, a, like a, a pyramid of like lots of different foundations contributed by a plethora of different scientists leading towards certain kinds of discovery can be mathematical, can be physical, can be linked, can be in other sciences. And progressively what happens is that essentially our universe and our world in the universe is very incrementally known better and better. Maybe we're very far from knowing, you know, the world and the universe 100%, probably that will never be achievable given our own limitations, given our finitude, etc., etc. But there is this sense that it uncovers more and more of the world. But does not art do the exact same thing? When you think about it, what is good art? I mean, of course, it will be very difficult here to reach like a, a satisfying uh, definition of what good art is. I think I was inspired to make this video by a recent uh, conversation I had online on a forum I love but never name that, uh, you know, conversation about art and uh, about whether it is possible to give like objective criteria 
for for good art, for example, or for what counts as art? Well, I I wouldn't say that like I'm going to sort of propose criteria to define good art here, but I would say that art, by definition, to me it seems, also aims at disclosing more and more of the world, except that its objects, which also belong in the world, they, also they belong in reality, are not the same objects that science studies. For example, if you take the, uh, let's just take a, a very simple example. Um, <clears throat> the example of um, ha happiness, let's say. Okay, well, probably because it's part of the world, right? It's, it's, not, it's part of the physical world according to science, a certain science, maybe chemistry or, you know, but again, or the psychological sciences will conduct by experiment, hypothesis, testing, and further and further, further research, maybe chemical explanations for brain processes that lead to the feeling of plenitude, of feeling happy, that will talk about the serotonin in the brain, how it is secreted, etc., etc. And based off of that, you can actually end up producing antidepressants for people to be happier. I mean, again, I'm I'm sort of like jumping here. I mean I'm 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 using shortcuts, but you know what I mean? Like there is a certain sense in a certain sense you could say like science has a particular approach to understanding happiness from a certain scientific perspective. And it's just as valid as for example a painting that represents that you know uh the state of happiness, evokes a particular state of happiness in certain paintings um by the French painter Renoir, which you might have heard of, whom you might have heard of, some of the some of the faces that he paints just evoke this deep feeling of happiness. Sometimes it it invokes innocence, sometimes it invokes uh, facetiousness, daring, all these concepts that it is very it is very clear very immediately that they are qualitative, and that they cannot exactly be captured in their full breadth, in the full breadth of their being, in the full breadth of their reality, by mere scientific research. The science will explain some processes, which are more geared towards the physical aspect of things, the formal aspect of things. And then in the much more qualitative, emotional dimension, something that is very hard to capture is the domain of art. Philosophy does yet something else. It, it is interested in like abstract first principles and other things. But art, good art, I think, does in a sense also get at the truth of things, but from a different angle. You get maybe a concept of happiness, science explores one aspect, art another one. And they are equally important to the further and further getting acquainted with this world that we were born in and that we are beings in and that is where we dwell. And I think for this reason, science and art are very much fundamental human activities that are to be seen from a philosophical point of view as very much allies and not rivals. All right, see you soon, guys. I hope you enjoyed this uh, little opinion piece.